welcome to part two of our Bible study video cast series. Oh, yes. We're picking right back up on our Bible study, the seven churches of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And our subtopic for today is the poor church versus the rich church. All right, man. And if you've joined us before, you always know that we start out with a word of prayer. Oh, so yes. So I'm Ray Ann Chaffin. This is Pastor Billy Washington. May God bless you now. Of Rose of Sharon Ministries and Pastor Ronald Walker, part of the Breach Worldwide Ministries. Amen. All Amen. Right. All right. Well, Pastor Walker, you want to go ahead and lead us off in prayer? Yes. I'll... Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us all together again. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would enlighten the words off these pages into the listeners' hearts and our hearts, Lord God. Give us wisdom, and Lord God, let us be able to share that wisdom with everyone that's on viewing today, God. And we pray, God, that you would just give us ears to hear your voice yes, Lord. and fill us with obedience, God, and the fear of God. And yes, help us Lord. walk by faith and not by sight, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank amen. you so much, Pastor amen. Walker. Welcome, sister. Oh, yes. Well, we're back again, and they've given me the privilege of opening up this wonderful lesson. Today's lesson is centered around two particular churches of the book of Revelation. Church number one that we're dealing with today is the church of Smyrna, the poor church. And church number two, which is the last church in the book of Revelation uh, within those seven churches that we're dealing with is the church of Laodicea. So the purpose of us going over and explaining the seven churches of Asia to you mm -hmm. from the book of Revelation is because of those seven churches represent seven types of believers All right. as well as literal churches. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to go ahead and start off with the Church of Smyrna. Okay. And I am coming from Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Okay. The church that would suffer persecution. All right. The poor church. Mm hmm Verse 8. And the angel of the church in Smyrna write, The words of the first and the last, yes. who died and came back to life. The yes. words of Jesus. Yes. Verse 9. I know your tribulation mm -hmm. and your poverty, yeah. but you are rich. All right. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Yes, yes. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Mm -hmm. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison mm -hmm. that you may be tested and for 10 days you will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. All right, all right. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. All right. My God, my God. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and jump right on in with something that um, Pastor Washington was asking Pastor Walker and I on yesterday okay. uh, during Sunday service. Um, imagine... You know, they're going through trials, they're going through tribulations, yes. um, they're impoverished, mm -hmm. and they're also under intense um, persecution. So, the question that Pastor Washington asked us was, have you ever prayed for deliverance and gotten an unexpected answer? Prayed for deliverance, mm -hmm. got an answer, mm -hmm. but the answer was unexpected. Amen, amen. Okay, I did ask that question. Amen. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because we look at um, the second chapter of Revelation, what mm -hmm. Jesus is saying to the church of Smyrna, he's, he, he's, not say, he's saying that you're going to be tested. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so and it's going to be for 10 days, and we don't know if 10 days is a literal 10 days or a figurative number, Probably a symbolic figurative. number as mm -hmm. well, but it's going to be a specific time where you're going to be tested. But then he says that, be faithful unto death. And that's what caught, that's what caught me right there because mm -hmm. what that is saying is some of you are not going to make it. Some of you are going to be tested, and in a result of the persecution, you're going to yes. lose your life. 
Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that them going through what they're going through, that they're praying and asking God for deliverance, but this is the answer they get. Be faithful unto death. Some of you are not going to make it out of this trial in this lifetime it says that the devil is going to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested all right and so jesus let us know that their church will be persecuted for a particular amount of time but jesus tells them to be faithful which means that um some of them were going to be martyred and um some of them were going oh, to God. die as oh, a God. result of this persecution the word says by satan mm -hmm. so they weren't going to die some of them were not going to die because of anything that they had did wrong but as a testimony to us living today and those living then for the ultimate reward and for the glory and the honor of God. So um, Jesus is telling every believer that's under intense persecution and abject poverty to be faithful unto death. And I will give you a crown of life. Okay. Amen. 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 Pastor Washington, Pastor Walker. Go ahead, man of God. Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, the question she said that I asked was, have mm -hmm, you ever prayed mm -hmm. a prayer? And you got an unexpected answer. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this is what happened to this particular church. Mm -hmm. They were under great tribulation, says the Lord. Great poverty, says the Lord. And so they were praying. They were waiting on the answer. And the answer came. Mm -hmm. uh, he just, when he brought the answer, he let them know that uh, I know all about it. Mm -hmm. About your poverty, your tribulations. But God said something unusual. Mm -hmm. He said, but thou art rich. Now, that's kind of confusing to me. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me you know about my tribulation and you know about my poverty, why are you telling me that I'm rich? I'm throwing it back at the panel. Why would you think he'd say something like that? What, what came to my mind is rich in faith. Yes, you know? they were rich in faith. Mm -hmm. They believed God was able to do anything. And I mm -hmm. believe that, uh, when God gave them that response that they didn't expect, I believe they received that with grace. Okay. And um, just laid down their life because they knew and believed that there was a hereafter. Okay. That there was hope in Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And, and also, um, you know, when you have Jesus, you really have everything that you need. And so um, their relationship with God is where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. So they had the very presence of God, the very bread of life with them. And so they may not have had uh, as much physical bread as they would like. as mm -hmm. they, they were impoverished. But they had the bread of the life and his presence. That's what makes us rich. That's what gives us the fullness of joy despite whatever is going on around us. And so, um, something else that was interesting, I was doing a little research. Okay. Uh, there's a minister named John Gill. I believe he's an author as well. He made an interesting statement about Smyrna. He said that their name signifies myrrh. Okay. Okay. Which um, has a bitter taste. Um, it's expressive of bitter afflictions and persecutions and death. Um, the people of God were enduring a lot during this time. But myrrh is has also it has a sweet smell so a bitter taste but it has a sweet fragrance mm -hmm. and yeah. those saints their worship was a sweet fragrance to god so in their sufferings for christ um they pleased him in their relationship and in their worship and um and, and you know you don't see this church complaining either mm -hmm. you know and, and and them being perfect in god's eye that's not saying they're they're not without fault it's just saying they, they are in right standing with god um and god and jesus did not find any sin in that church um that he felt like was um bringing his name down okay in fact there were only two churches that um, of the seven that were Jesus addressed, they were not condemned for having sin in the congregation. That's one of them. And they were poor. So what it looked like on the outside is not what they had going in, going on on the inside. Mm -hmm. And um, something else that um, I have to give Pastor Washington, um, he gave this to me as well, that there are three reasons for suffering. Now I want you to listen up because this is going to help somebody. This okay. is going to help somebody. The number one reason is for a personal reason okay that's when your character is being built as you and causes you to seek god so something that happens to you a devastation that happens to you mm -hmm. that it, the purpose of it 
is to build your character and to cause you to seek God. And what came to my mind was Jonah. He was running from the presence of God. All right. Next thing you know, he finds himself shipwrecked all right. and at the bottom of the ocean in the belly of a whale. All and right. all that happened to bring him to that place in God where he needed to be. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to add about a personal reason? Well, God always have used uh, mm -hmm. tribulation. Uh, Paul said in the fifth chapter of Romans, uh, beginning at verse 3, he said, And we know that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh us not ashamed. So God uses mm -hmm. things uh, and allows us to suffer things for our personal growth. James even said in the first chapter of James, My brother encountered all joy. When you fall into mm. divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfected and entire, wanting nothing. So yes, it's nothing new for God to use uh, problems to cause us to seek Him, and in and in doing that, we have a richer relationship. With him, if that's Amen. what you were asking. Amen. Exactly. And uh, Pastor Walker, I was going to ask you. I know you have an incredible testimony. <laughs> we heard some of it on Sunday. Yes, Would you like to add anything about God using suffering for personal reasons that help you personally? Or, since my daughter has a, uh, asked Pastor Walker, mm -hmm. you heard the question. Mm -hmm. I would like to know from Pastor Walker, maybe he may have prayed about something he was going through and didn't get the answer he expected, but it was an answer. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was a better answer than what he would have given himself, but it wasn't what he was expecting. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. We want to know a little bit about your testimony uh, uh, or just your insight on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when I look at this text of Scripture, what uh, jumped out to me you know, in life experience, you're going to be tested. God is going to test the genuineness of your faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like he put the children of Israel in the wilderness, he put it in the wilderness for two reasons. To, to expose their level of commitment okay. and to teach them to rely on Him daily. Mm. So when God puts you in the test, He wants to expose your level of commitment. He wants you to see, are you really committed mm -hmm. to the cause of Jesus Christ or okay. to the calling that He, to the mandate He's placed on your life? And the only mm. way you can see if you're really committed, He has to allow tests and trials to come in to see if you're going to endure them and, and continue to walk by faith because okay. a lot of tendencies to be, of believers is to, when things don't look like we want them to look in the natural, mm -hmm. we tend to draw back. But God is trying to let us know what we see it with our natural eyes is an en enemy to what he told us. Mm. Okay. So we can't believe what we see over what God said. All right. Ooh, our job is, as Christians is to look through the eyes of faith. When things in the natural don't line up with what God told us, we got to mm -hmm. reach deep down and look through the eyes of faith and mm -hmm. say, God going to mm -hmm. make a way when there seemed to be no way. Mm -hmm. Like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. The king told everybody to die, bow before the idol. Okay. And they said, we ain't going to bow because our God is able to deliver us. Okay. That's your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they said this, if God don't deliver us, we still ain't going to bow. Mm -hmm. That showed faithfulness. Amen. So God committed this church at Smyrna for faithfulness. Mm -hmm. They was willing to get in the fire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the only way your your bonds going to be broke if you get in the fire. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Try to help somebody. Amen. Once they got in the fire, they say they started walking around free. The fire burned their bonds. Okay. And then they said, what? I thought we threw three men in the fire. But it's the fourth man in there, and he looks like the son of God. Mm -hmm. But this is my question. Mr. Washington, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. This is what God showed me. Why, when they seen they wasn't getting burned in the fire, didn't they run out the fire? Mm -hmm. They stayed in the fire because Jesus was in the fire. That's the safest place you can be. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. <laughs> you Amen. got to be faithful unto the end. When you accept Christ, you come into the faith, then you got to walk by faith, and then you got to die in the faith. Amen. We be blessed, brothers and sisters. I hope that helps somebody. Amen. I, I've never been asked why didn't they just run out mm -hmm. after they saw that the fire had no effect upon them. And my brother says probability would be they didn't run out because they noticed Jesus was in the fire with them. And it's better to be in a trial and a tribulation in any type of situation Glory with to Jesus God. Amen. Amen. than Hallelujah. floating around free without <laughs> Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Uh, 
have my little two cents to say. May God bless him for that wonderful testimony. And now I'm feeling a little better now. I was concerned, but I believe that God has a word for you today. And if not you, he definitely gave me my word for the day. Amen. Yes. Praise yes, God. Yes, right. And the second reason why uh, at times God will allow suffering is for a relative reason. Okay. Number one was personal. Mm -hmm. Number two, relative. So that personal means, builds yourself up. Mm -hmm. Relative is for someone else. Although you're doing the suffering, mm -hmm. it's not because of something that you've done, but it's to help somebody else. Yes. They're going to notice your tenacity. Mm -hmm. uh, James said, you've heard of the patience of Job. Mm -hmm. It's in the book of James, probably mm -hmm. the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. He said, you've heard of the patience of Job, how that in the end, the Lord had pity on him. Mm -hmm. So, I better let my little daughter talk. But Amen. I, but this is a wonderful statement here. Now, we're going from personal suffering to help me personally, to relative suffering, because somebody needs to hear my testimony yes. about how God Brought me out. Okay. Something of this nature. Let's see what Amen. she's going to say. Amen. Amen. And, and the word of God says that Job was actually a perfect and upright man. Okay. So he suffered so that we could look at his life and dare not complain and, and know that, okay. hey, you know what, if God took it from me, mm -hmm. allowed, or allowed it to be taken from me, that he's going to give me double either in this life or the next. Okay. Which brings us to our third reason why right. God will allow suffering, and that is for the ultimate prize. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation verse uh, 10, chapter 2. You mean chapter 2, verse 10? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. If you be faithful unto death, I will give you a crown of life. And this parallels Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. Um, where God talks about the, cha the champions of faith. Mm -hmm. People like Abraham. People like, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, yes. Mentions them by name. Mentions Samson as well. Champions of faith. Mm -hmm. But then God, and then the others are also mentioned okay. in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. And God Verse allowed, 36 talks about now these others that went through the same, had the same amount of faith. But the ending didn't turn out the same way of the uh, ones that got great deliverance, that received great deliverance. Mm -hmm. God allowed some believers to go through trials, but their outcome was different. Okay. Because their reward was not on this side, but on the other side. Amen. I'm talking about eternity. So, mm -hmm. we have some tribulations are pers for personal growth. Other tribulations are for rel uh, they are relative for someone else. Mm -hmm. But the last one, this, this lady just said, the other tribulation we go through and trials we go through are for ultimate blessings. In other words, you're not going to see it on this side. You're going to see it on the other side. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's exactly what I'm saying. All right. All right. Man. So we're actually getting ready to go into our next church, which is the Church of Laodicea, unless Pastor Washington or Pastor Walker like to add anything before we transition. Oh. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, we're going to be in Book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. Okay. The Church of Laodicea, mm -hmm. the church with lukewarm faith. Go ahead okay. and pick up in verse 14. And the angel of the Lord, and to the angel of the church in Laodicea, yes. right? The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of God's creation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Jesus. All right. Verse 15. I know your works. Mm -hmm. You are neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, yes, yes. I will spit you out of my mouth. My God. For you say, I am rich. Mm -hmm. I have prospered. I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. My God. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire mm -hmm. so that you may be rich. And white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen. And salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. All right. My so be God. zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in to him and eat with him, mm -hmm. and he with me. Yes. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, mm -hmm. as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Yes, yes. My God. Who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right, all right. My God. Amen. Anybody want to? What was what what disturbed him so much to where he didn't have anything good to say about Laodicea? Mm -hmm. Yes, they would jump out to mm -hmm. me. Jesus said, he said something about their confession. He said, mm -hmm. "You say mm -hmm. you're rich. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You say you have need of nothing." Mm -hmm. Verse seventeen. But uh -huh. to tell the truth, when you feel like you don't have need of nothing, that means you don't really need God either. Because mm -hmm. You can handle everything. Amen. I think. No, I believe God want to prosper us and uh, bless us financially. Mm -hmm. But when the church main focus is on money, mm -hmm. it interferes with training and discipleship in others. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a shame mm -hmm. when the man of God think more about the offering mm -hmm. than he do how many souls he win each week. Amen. Okay. Wow. So God, I believe he, one of the reasons he called them lukewarm because they their focus and their, their love had grown just to materialism. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they became uh, uh, idol, the idolatry. Mm -hmm. you know, they worshipped things and money and prestige and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And God wanted to tell them they needed to repent mm -hmm. because they was blinded by riches. Mm. He, says, he said, put it on some eye salve where you can really see where your blessings come from. I think a lot of time in the body of Christ, we fall in love with the blessings mm -hmm. and forget all about the blesser. Wow. Amen. Amen. I, I've cool. wandered down through the years uh, mm -hmm. why he used the word lukewarm. And, mm -hmm. and you've given some wonderful uh, insight, Lady Ray Ann and mm -hmm. Pastor Walker. And uh, I'm just going to receive it and continue to meditate on it. Because the reason why I'm acting so deep here, I don't want to be caught in that same uh, scenario. You see, these messages to the churches that ought to be uh, a rhema word to us. From Sunday, um, you said to the, the audience was that we have to honor God's plan for our life. Amen. So Laodicea had a whole bunch going on, but clearly didn't have the right things going on. So mm -hmm. are we allowing ourselves to get so busy with our family or so busy with work or so busy with what our plans are that we are neglecting the work of ministry? Are we neglecting to fellowship with believers? Are we neglecting our purpose? So I don't want to just push it off on the Laodiceans. But I want to absorb it for Pastor Billy Washington. So I think here's what we've said today so mm -hmm, far. Mm -hmm. We've had two churches. One called the Church of Smyrna. Mm -hmm. They considered themselves poor because of the tribulations they were going through and because of the hard times they were going through. But God said, but thou art rich. And the panel has concluded that true riches have to do with the fullness of God being in our lives. Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. Amen. And now we go to the church that's the exact opposite. Everything the church of Smyrna didn't have going for them, the church of Laodicea did have going for them. Amen. There was no tribulation recorded. Mm -hmm. There was no poverty recorded. And matter of fact, as he said, that they said in the 17th verse of the third chapter, thou says that thou art rich and increased and have need of nothing. So everything seems to be going their way, but God says you don't know, but you are, the Bible says, uh, poor, mm -hmm. blind, mm -hmm. and naked. My mm, God. My God. That's a pretty tough indictment. But he gave him the remedy, and that is uh, realize what true spirituality is. Mm -hmm. Just like you uh, find out what true gold is. Gold, you only find pure gold after it's been tried in the fire. And so uh, be willing to do things God's way and be willing to suffer the consequences and then you will end up being everything God would have you to be. Yeah, amen. amen. I just want to say this. Everything That's... we need is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And not only did He give us the Word of God, but He also gave us pastors after His own heart to feed amen. us mm -hmm. with wisdom and understanding. So we have what we need to know what we should do, mm -hmm. but we have to position ourselves and make ourselves available to be poured into yes. so we don't end up at the Church of Laodicea with all this stuff 
but we're missing the very purpose that God has for our life. We're missing his presence in our life. And I just want to say this, that God won't give you anything to replace him. Amen. And then we have to remember that God, that not God bless us, but also the devil can give you stuff too. Mm -hmm. And it may look like a blessing. But if it causes you to stumble Amen. or it becomes a distraction from your purpose, it's not from God. All so right. we have to be mindful of the type of messages that we send out as a church. You know, I hear about prosperity gospel and there's nothing wrong with standing on the promises of God or the prescriptions of God. Mm -hmm. You don't want to confuse the two. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. I know Pastor Watch can write that down mm -hmm. uh, maybe at a, a, a future Bible study. But we, 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 we want to make sure that we give balance to the word of God. Amen. I mean, I, I feel like in this season in the body of Christ, it's a lot of believers mm -hmm. run into gratify their flesh, mm -hmm. all right? Amen, amen. And it makes me think of a, a, a story about a hunter that was in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And he put a jar in some brush and he put some peanuts down inside that jar. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he knew, he, would, he, he hunted monkeys. Okay. And he knew that monkey was going to come and put his hand in that jar to get those peanuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and sure enough, when he, he left off, and hid himself, that monkey came and put his hand in that jar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all the monkey had to do to, to escape the hunter was let go of the peanuts and he could slip his hand out the jar. Okay. But he wouldn't let go of the peanuts. And he seen the hunter coming with the machete in his hand mm -hmm. to cut his head off. But because mm -hmm. he wanted to gratify his flesh mm -hmm. and wouldn't let go of those peanuts, yes. he lost his life. See, there's a lot of people in the church spiritually grabbing hold of peanuts. Mm -hmm. They're seeking houses, cars, land, and property. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But you first got to seek first the kingdom of God. And then he said what? He'll add everything unto you. Yes. So we got to get our focus right Yes. in order to mm. be effective witness and do what God has created us to do. Yes. Called us yes. to do in the body of Christ. We're, we're distracted. We're distracted. Yes. It's got to be a balance. Mm -hmm. Amen. And first John, he said what? He said he wished above all things yes. that mm -hmm. you prosper, prosper and be in health as your soul. Soul, soul prosper. Your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions have to be spiritually mature mm -hmm. so you can be a good steward to what God has given you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Be blessed, people of God. Let go of the peanuts. Amen. And seek the true riches. Amen. The anointing of God, the favor of God, the grace and the mercy of God. Yes. Amen. Wow. Amen. Uh, just before I drop the mic on his behalf, <laughs> here's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. The 19th verse of the third chapter of the book of Revelation. In case we don't heed his advice, which he gave a perfect illustration of let the peanuts go so that you can go ahead and escape from whatever the hunter is trying to do to you. The 19th verse says, as many as I love, Revelation 3 and 19, as many as I love, mm. I rebuke and chasten. Mm. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm. In other words, after this grave warning we've received, if we don't repent, then God's going to put a heavy hand upon us. Because if he loves you, he's got to chastise you. If he doesn't chastise you, you're none of his. That's right. right. May God bless you in the name of Man, Jesus. Lady God. Ray Ann Chaffin has done a wonderful job. She may have a few more words before we close, but I'm so happy to be sitting in the presence of Lady Ray Ann Chaffin, our moderator, and Pastor Ronald Walker that gave that dynamic illustration. Uh, I'm through. God has spoken to me. He spoke to me earlier, but I'm just steady beginning to be filled and feel more. May God bless you for tuning in. I'm through. Would you like Amen. to close us out? Um, may God bless you. I just want to say from the uh, Church of Smyrna or to the Church of Smyrna, um, take your eyes off of your circumstance and keep your eyes fixed on the Master. I want you to understand that everything that you sow, all the good that you do in this life, you will be rewarded either in this life all the next because God is a just God and to the church of Laodicea the lukewarm believer I just want to say this you know if you put God first he'll set everything else in order yes okay so I just want to say that you know something that jumped out to me from Sorry, the passage you read mm -hmm. was be zealous therefore and repent be 
zealous. Mm -hmm. um, someone that is zealous for the Lord is somebody that's on fire for mm -hmm. God. That's somebody that has a forever for God. Someone that's excited about the things of God. Yes, yes. Okay? That is what God desires for each and every one of us. And that does not sound like you. All you have to do is repent. And be honest with God. Come to him as you are and say, God, I don't really feel that fire. I don't have that excitement that I used to have. Mm -hmm. I've gotten so busy with the cares of this world and acquiring stuff that I haven't been putting you first. He'll forgive you and ask him how you can change. And please stay plugged in to a fellowship of believers and find yourself. Ask God to send you a pastor if you don't have one. And on that note, we'd like to invite you to come join us. Yes. We're here every Sunday at the Best Western Plus Hotel, Repairer of the Bridge, Worldwide Ministries, mm -hmm. Rosa Sharon Ministries. We have service 1030, and we're at 3230 Forest Hill Circle yes. in Forest Hill, Texas, on the north side of the building. Won't you please come join us? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. Walk in the faith of God.